right, guys. So we're out here at the beach, bright and early. Can't let it, can't see it's light, but anyway, we're out here with Ishwood's fish. Actually, he's not here yet, but he'll be here in a little bit. We're gonna start out this morning targeting striper with this SP minnow, and uh, yeah, not gonna catch anything up here, so we're gonna get our lines in the water. So I'll lay out the uh, tide situation here. You guys like to know about the tide, so. I got here at about 5.15, start fishing, and high tide is at 6 a.m. It's like a 3.9 or something like that. Not too big of a high tide, but it is the high tide. We were gonna fish about a half an hour up to the high tide, and then an hour or two after the high tide uh, as it's falling. So. You know, ideally when you're fishing the surf, generally high tide is usually better. But uh, you never know when you're fishing the surf. Conditions look pretty good this morning. No, almost no wind. Swell's relatively low. We got a nice little hole here. Let's see if we can pull a fish out of it. I was just talking to another angler this morning. He said he got one yesterday morning, right at quarter to six. It's right about what time it is now, so. I got a feeling there's gonna be some fish around. We just gotta find one. Well guys, I got a feeling that uh, Fish with fish, I think he might have slept past his alarm because it's about 6 o'clock now. He said he was going to get here at like 5.30 and uh, no sign of him yet, so got a feeling that uh, he might have missed out on this one, so looks like it's just going to be me today. We'll see, maybe he'll come late. Fish on. First one of the morning. I just turned off my camera to save some battery. And boom, there he is. It's been a while since I caught some striper from the beach, so I don't think this is a monster. But it is a fish. Ish, where are you at? You're missing out. I think I might have hooked this one kind of funny. Feels like it's coming in sideways. definitely swiped at the bait, but then he got hooked in the belly. That's why he's coming in a little funky. There you go. That is a fat fish. Alright guys, there's our first fish of the morning. Nice healthy little striped bass, probably about 20, 22 inches or so. Look at how fat that fish is. It's got a big old belly on it. We'll check it out later. Probably some anchovies inside there or just gorged on sand crabs. Caught it on this SP minnow, like I said. That's what we're throwing today. I'll leave this linked in the description below. If you haven't caught a striped bass on a plug, you gotta try this lure. This is actually the first lure that I ever threw for striper. And I gotta say, the, the feeling when you catch it on a plug is just, it's wit infinitely better than catching on a bait. Check this out, linked in the description below. We're gonna get back out there. Morning's still young. We're gonna see if we can catch another fish. I think, so I think the braid tangled around the eye. Oh, shit. And then when I tried to cast it, just ripped it right off. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, it tangled all tangled. Oh, wow. 
Oh, okay, let me fix this. Got a little bit of a disaster here. I think the line tangled around the eye of the uh, the eye of the pole. I don't know. It must have tangled around or something, and he ripped it all right off of the uh, ripped the guide right off the pole. So I'm gonna have to do some makeshift uh, repair work here. Okay, let's try this again, see if this works. All I did was stick that eye back in there. Hopefully it stays for now. It's like pulling out Christmas lights. <laughs> the whole yeah. I just want to throw all my lures in there. Alright guys, going to do a little bit of a different style catch and cook video. So uh, bear with me as my first time narrating uh, the cooking portion of this video. Um, so I've gotten a couple of comments on my past videos asking me to include the cleaning portion of the fish uh, before I do the cooking. So here we are with any normal sized fish. Uh, you take one cut behind the pectoral fin there and then I do one slit along the bottom all the way in front of the fins and back, all the way back to the tail fin. And then one cut along the top uh, right in front of the top fins there all the way back to the tail trying to find the backbone with your knife um, and staying in front of that all the way down. And uh, one suggestion I would give to you for those of you who are new to cleaning fish is it is always easier to clean a fish with a sharp knife. This knife that I have here is not the sharpest, um, so that is giving me a little bit of a difficulty. But if you have a sharp knife, it should be no problem. And another tip that I will give you that I didn't add on this a video is if you leave your fish on ice um, before cleaning the, the, the fish it'll firm up the meat a little bit and it makes it a lot easier to clean a lot easier to work with um, after sitting on ice for a couple of hours so once you've made both slits you'll work your knife along the backbone there you'll go all the way down to the spine and then for me instead of cutting through the rib cage a lot of people when they're filleting fish they'll cut right through the rib cage but I just like to work the knife right around the rib cage and then when you have your fillet all cut off, you'll see here, no rib bones, nothing. So that's your first fillet. Um, and then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. As you can see, this fish had quite the belly on it. And in a second, we'll open up the stomach. And here we are. It had quite a few anchovies, at least four or five, a couple of good sized ones. Um, no sand crabs in this one, but definitely was feeding good on those anchovies out there. All right, so now that we have our fillet separated from the carcass of the fish, the next step is to cut away the skin from the rest of the meat. So it's kind of a feel deal. The more fillets you've done, the better you'll get at it. But basically you wanna slant your knife towards the cutting board at a slight angle and just work it down the skin. Um, so it's not, not too, too much of an angle where it cuts through the skin, but then enough angle where you can stay right along that skin and you're not wasting too much meat. And then after you've taken off the skin, the last step is just to cut off these pin bones here in the middle. So another part where the more fillets you've done, the easier it gets. And uh, as you can see here, you just cut out that thin strip of meat, working on both sides of those pin bones, and those should come out nicely. And so once you've done all that, you're left with uh, two nice fillets. This was about a four pound fish, give or take a few pounds. And I'd say we got at least two, two and a half pounds of meat out of it. Definitely too much for one meal. So everything that was left over, a vacuum sealed. If you fish for food, you've got to get a vacuum sealer. It makes your fish last much longer than just leaving them in the fridge. Um, so here's the cooking portion. It's a quick and easy recipe. You got flour, here's some garlic powder, putting it all in a Ziploc bag, some Lowry seasoned salt. You can use regular salt too. Either way, it doesn't matter. And then a little bit of fresh peppercorn. And, oh, definitely don't want the uh, cap in there. Don't add that in your fish. It's not gonna taste good, trust me. Not that I've tried it, but just trust me on that one. So you'll mix them all up. Make sure they're nice and mixed. You don't want any clumps of pepper or clumps of salt getting on your fish. Um, and then once they're mixed, you just drop your fillets in there. I cut them into about uh, two or three inch slices so they're uh, nice and manageable 
you want to seal that up double triple and check quadruple check that because if that's open this right here is going to create a huge mess in your kitchen that you do not want so once you got it sealed up mix it all up so that flour the pepper the salt the garlic it's all um, on the uh, fish distributed on the fish evenly and then after that the last thing to do is just whip up an egg and uh, heat up some oil in the frying pan i like to heat it to medium heat uh, just enough to cook it so it's not too slow. You don't want to dry out the fish and not too hot that there's some raw pieces in the middle. So you dip your fish into the egg and then put it on the frying pan. Pretty simple and self-explanatory, but that's it. Throw it in the oil once it's hot. Give it about seven to eight minutes. You can adjust that based on the thickness of the fillets. Once you see that it's about halfway cooked through, you'll go ahead and give it a flip. Another seven or eight minutes on the other side, and voila, you should have some fresh striped bass. And striped bass is a very mild fish, so it'll go well with any other vegetables. I like, always like to eat my fish with rice, and uh, you'll see it has a nice white flaky meat. And uh, this egg really locks in those juices. The egg is kind of like a, a sealant on the outside, and it keeps all the moisture in on the fish and keeps it from drying out. But uh, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you catch some striped bass, I hope you guys cook it up. Try this recipe. It's definitely one of my favorites for any striped bass or any white fish. And uh, let me know what you guys think of this catch and cook style. Obviously it's a little different than what I've done in the past. Let me know, should I change anything? Should I stop doing this? Should I keep doing it? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them there as well. I always check the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you next time.